Hello everyone, I am back and my voice is back. <laughs> well guys, let's talk about, let's talk about another cross-platform fight. Previously we had Nugano against Fury and I said this fight could end up in controversy and Tyson Fury could get dropped or knocked out, which oh my oh my, what actually happened? And let's not even dive into who most people think who won the fight. I mean, judges didn't thought that, but you know, there is a public opinion and then there is the opinion of the judges. Besides the point, boxing may be corrupt, maybe that was the wrong decision, maybe that was the right decision, but now we have AJ versus Nagano. And the good thing is, the takeaway is that no one is asking, oh, is Nogano enough good to be in the ring with AJ? Well, he kind of proven that point in the fight against Fury. <laughs> so, okay, guys, let's dive into it. Is it actually good for these crossover fights? More precisely, is it good for Nogano to be in these crossover fights? And quick shout out uh if you guys are interested in boxing there is actually this really good book about the boxing and kind of the money side of the boxing it's called journeyman so you can go and just buy it in amazon i'm gonna drop down the link uh you know i'm not promoting i'm not making any money from it i'm just saying this is actually quite an interesting book it costs like four quid or something like that so uh yeah if you want you can read it it kind of gives a bit more perspective and more dimensions uh regarding the you know, journeyman of boxing and how actually the sport, how tough it is. Uh, having said that, okay, let's dive into it. <laughs> let's dive into Nugano versus AJ. So, yes, people, you know, I am a bit of the numbers guy. I like to use numbers to create kind of perspective. And this is one of the reasons why I like to do so many comparisons with numbers. And if you just dive onto it, Nogano as a person has committed seven years of his life uh, to UFC. So you can see this is when he started fighting in UFC. It was 2015. Now then he finished in 2022. So his last two fights were like the biggest ones. Okay. Because uh, in 2021 he won the championship. Then he defended it. Again mostly we don't kind of know the numbers but you know what i actually have the numbers from another news site and here are the numbers right so you can see in the last five fights i mean at the moment he used it at the peak these are the numbers how much nugano was making so his best uh gate you know his best income from the fights was his last fight where he made six hundred thousand guys and when he won championship, he made 580. This is not including tax. Remember, guys, you still need to pay tax. The tax is like, what, 40, 50 percent? You know, it states it's maybe a bit different, but roughly about 40 percent of this money goes away. Again, guys, it's not bad. Like anyone who's making 500,000 a fight, that's a that's a good amount of money. Again, seven years down the line. Uh, let's see the perspectives from the boxing side. Nogano took the fight with Tyson Fury. What was the amount of money he was offered from uh, for the boxing boxing promoters to take this fight, guys? What was it? Was it 500k? Let's take a look. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, it's 10 million dollars, which is 8.2 million pounds, which literally comes down to more or less two times the amount of money Nugano made in UFC in last five fights put together. Yeah, that is a lot of money. I'm going to make him an offer again with you. So yeah, guys, 10 million. 10 million. Boxing world rated Francis Nugano at 10 million okay besides that I was watching interviews after the fight and I'm so surprised I'm big Tyson Fury fan 
again, I cannot really comment on this fight, who should have won, but, okay guys, so here it is, Francis Nogano get paid 10 million, way more he was get paid in UFC for a single fight, he's a prize fighter, they do have expiration dates, okay, they cannot fight forever, having said that, he did prove that he has the skills, they paid him this amount of money, from financial point of view, they gave him as little as possible, it's just normal, but even that, they gave him 10 million, which was so much more he was making UFC, and the bottom line is, did he made enough profit for the boxing world, was this fight profitable, that was the bottom line question, was it profitable, yes it was, totally was, and this is the reason why he's fighting AJ now, because they saw him going and fighting Tyson Fury, and Tyson Fury said, I was in my best shape, even though he was the heaviest in last five fights, he came in at 277 and three quarters, so literally 278, that's after the box rack, okay, and not only that, when I was watching the fight, Tyson Fury was slow, round three, he gassed out, I'm sorry, when has Tyson Fury really gassed out on his stamina, they, most of the time he doesn't have stamina issues, Tyson Fury did not take this fight serious, he thought, oh this will gonna be so easy, he went in there, and Francis Nugano was like, you know what, I'm going there to win this fight, again guys, I will not comment who won the fight, I think we all know who won the fight, okay, and this is the reason why someone is getting the second fight, and he's fighting against AJ, and I assume he's getting at least 10 million or more, and it's well deserved, I was watching interview after the fight, and I'm gonna link it in, and the more I watch about Francis Nogano, he, see, he seems like such delight, he's so down to it, he's like, oh yeah, first fight, you know, whatever, um, it was what it was, and I was like, he's right, his first fight was against WBC, literally, living world champion of heavyweight boxing, he went 10 rounds, he didn't get knocked out, he actually put the guy on the back, Besides the point, I believe Tyson Fury wasn't in the best shape of his life, okay? He wasn't prepared for the fight. He just proved so much as a fighter, that he has so much to offer, and that he does justify that 10 million value, and that the UFC was underpaying him massively. Because if he can get that from Tyson Fury, he could get that from UFC, guys, okay? We have UFC, we have, I mean, like, MMA, we have uh, bare knuckle fighting. I don't know much about it, but I see lots of boxers or UFC fighters going there, and which kind of indicates there is money. And we have boxing. I really see all these platforms are colliding and going together, but the whole point is, what I really want to state it here for you guys, is that competition is good, okay, because you have UFC, and they are tying down their fighters, they're giving them a chance, which is great, but once they hit the peak, these UFC fighters, they get locked in, with unfavorable contracts, and that's it. In conclusion, to take the fight against Tyson, Fury or AJ is just normal. This generates so much more interest for UFC, for boxing and it just promotes that cross-platform fights do work. And competition in a fight game or price fighting is good. If UFC is offering 600 Boxing giving 10 million, well again guys, we have bare knuckle fights, they could offer more, they can offer more than 10 or less than 10, that's besides the point, 
they create competition. There is no single monopoly, okay? Having said that, I'm quite sure in the future, the fighters in UFC, the contract's gonna change for this not to happen. Because Francis Nogano will gonna be a poster boy that there is exit from the bad contracts where you can go out, you can make some fights outside of UFC and you can make a really good paycheck, okay? So there will gonna be repercussions to stop people from doing it. Besides that, all I can say, he is looking after himself, he is looking after his family and everybody else, okay? Because UFC is not doing it. He is doing the right move. End of day, you get the paycheck, you pay your tax and you enjoy your life. So all I can say, I really wish all the best for Francis Nogano. I'm looking for his next fight and yeah guys get your money's worth Mr. Zas out